strap on your seatbelt and get ready for some safety because today we look at Grey Matter's 1993 release, The Incredible Crash Dummies, for the Mega Drive and the Genesis. For all you Yankees! The Incredible Crash Dummies, if you don't know, was a media campaign throughout the 1990s advocating the importance of wearing seatbelts. Particularly important if you drive a shitbox like this. This included toys, an animated series, some comics, but most importantly, some games. That is where this video comes in, where I talk the talk and I play the plays. It centers on a few crash dummies who have to rescue their Dr. Zub from the evil junk man who stole the Torso 9000, whatever that is. I haven't watched the animated series or anything, so I've actually got no idea what's going on. I should probably watch it for the common good of this video, but meh. It's an everyday platformer, where you run and jump around a level and you throw spanners at enemies. Uh, it doesn't really throw anything innovative into the mix, so the question is, is it fun? Well, no. Frankly, this game doesn't give you much of a chance. It employs a few cheap tricks such as enemies suddenly coming from either direction, attempting to ruin your day. It doesn't give you much of a chance to lob your spanner at them, and it happens quite frequently. Since each level is on a time limit too, you can't really dwindle about waiting for the Robocop sellouts to come to you. The game doesn't give you enough time considering how each level is timed, which I guess is the challenge, but it's not balanced enough and will make you wish you were playing something good, like Spyro 3. Love you, bro. Over that, when you die, it is all the way back to the start of the level for you. It's discouraging, to say the least. I also found the controls to be a bit slippery, which really comes a problem considering the amount of jumping around you have to do. You might as well be walking on thin ice. Like this game. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> thin ice. <laughs> Every time you land a jump, you seem to skid a bit, which totally throws off your accuracy. I don't know if they're trying to make it more challenging or what, but even if you are a seasoned platformer player, like me, you're stuck in this game no matter what. That, everything just moves way too fast. Before you know it, you would have skidded halfway across the level, losing all manner of limbs in the process. So at this point in the review, you may ask what this game has going for it. Well, puns. Puns everywhere. Here, enjoy some puns. One thing I did like though and won't complain about is how they visualize the health system. I'm a sucker for creative visualization, so that scores the game some brownie points. Every time the game suckers you out of some health, be it by enemies or parking meters, you lose a limb. You start off as a full body crash dummy, but as your health gets whittled down, and it will, he will gradually lose his arms and legs, until he's just a sad looking bouncing torso. There are screwdrivers scattered around the level, which when collected, will gain you back a bodily appendage. It should be noted that losing health won't actually affect the gameplay, it's just a clever way of showing you about the standard boring health meter. I thought it was cool, so I pointed it out. Now back to the complaining. Most notably, like how they could have built on that system more. Maybe make it so you can't jump as high when you lose your legs, or maybe you can't throw the spanners as far when you're minus a few arms. I guess the game is as hard as concrete as it is though, so maybe it's for the best. Actually, another thing I didn't mind was the graphics. I found them to be quite vibrant and detailed, with the animation being fairly smooth. It's not perfect, but it's better than a sack of crap. As all retro gamers will agree though, graphics aren't everything. Especially with a game as old as this one, it just can't reasonably rely on that feature alone. Suffice to say, I didn't get very far in this game, and I didn't really have any interest in trying further. I was just too frustrated. As far as I got while recording was this boss fight, where I reversed a pissed off blender shooting croutons at me or something. I did beat this when I originally played, and as far as I remember, it involved jumping on top of it multiple times. I didn't succeed this time though, which wasn't helped by the fact that the camera follows you up, you can't see a damn thing that you're doing. After that there was a bonus level, where I did something. I didn't actually care enough to look it up. That's the effect that this game has had on me. The good news though is there was more puns, so there's that. Ultimately, this game makes itself longer by throwing cheap after cheap death at you, and by not including a fair checkpoint system. It's lazy game design, and it makes me mad. You might be able to salvage something from this game if nostalgia hits you because of the general IP, but I'm both too young and from the wrong country. I'm just the wrong person to give a shit. Whether you do give a shit or not though, I think you should subscribe. Come on, treat yourself. While you're at it, check out my Facebook page and my blog for the latest updates on just everything and anything. Come on, links are in the description. But from the bottom of my heart, 
Thank you, Retro Gamers, for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.